All righty. Hello, everybody. My name is Lauren Wall. Uh, I am a Master of Science candidate in the Modern Human Anatomy graduate program. And today I'll be talking about my capstone project, the evaluation of 3D digital models in head and neck gross anatomy. I'd like to acknowledge my capstone mentor, Dr. Kaylee Orr, my advisor, Dr. Danielle Royer, and my external reviewer, Jake Shear, as well as both the classes of 2021 and 2022 for the Modern Human Anatomy program and the MHA program in general. So my capstone was based on the difficulty I had with head and neck anatomy last year in gross anatomy and visualizing these two dimensional structures, such as this image here, in a three dimensional space. So doing further research, there are few affordable resources uh, and models and detailed enough 3D models that exist for advanced head and neck anatomy to the extent that gross anatomy students in the MHA program would need to know. And so in order to come up with a 3D model that might accurately uh, detail some of this complex anatomy, I decided to use the parasympathetic cranial nerves and associated osteological pathways as my um, quote unquote difficult head and neck anatomy to visualize. So when I did a, a literature review, seeing what kind of effects 3D models had on student uh, performance in their courses and in their confidence, um, it was a little bit unknown to what the extent that uh, the 3D models had an effect on these parameters. But from what I could find is that uh, 3D models tend to have higher content assessment scores. Uh, they give higher confidence and enjoyment levels for students and students gave the most positive feedback regarding these 3D models. And then this is just an example of a segmentation process of one of these uh, articles. So ultimately, my hypothesis was to test if using these 3D digital models of parasympathetic cranial nerves with their associated osteology to study advanced head and neck anatomy, if they will affect the performance and or the confidence of graduate students enrolled in the modern human anatomy program. So in order to make a 3D model, I had to create one first. So I started in 3D Slicer with a microcomputed tomography data set of a human cranium. I manually segmented all 317 slices incorporating uh, the parasympathetic cranial nerves, which are uh, four cranial nerves I'll talk about in the next slide and their associated osteologies. And then I upload, I imported this uh, 3D model into Maya and gave a more, uh, rounded and cleaner render of this model as well with those nerves. And then following my render in Maya, I uploaded my models into Sketchfab, an online open access platform for 3D models. Since there are four cranial nerves associated with the parasympathetics, um, I did one model per cranial nerve because unfortunately Sketchfab did not allow me to combine all of these into one model. So that was just some, uh, some user error. But here's what all, these, all four of these models look like. And so my method for determining the efficacy of my models was I recruited a total of 44 MHA students from both the first and second year cohorts, a total of 20 first year MHA students participated fully, and uh, three second year MHA students participated fully. So I was able to divide these students up into experimental versus control groups randomly. I randomly divided them up. The first year students were based on their lab groups. Um, and so the experimental group was the group that was going to interact with the 3D model. And then the control was the group that would interact with only traditional lecture and laboratory resources, including uh, textbooks, atlases, cadaveric dissection, uh, et cetera, any materials students would normally use to study head and neck. And so I wanna highlight that this parenthetical nine here, the, 10 is the number of students that participated in the research in the lab in person itself, but nine students uh, only filled out all of the online uh, assessments and forms to completion. So I did my data analysis based around this number nine. So the first year students, they were given their spring gross anatomy 2021 live cranial autonomics lectures and, and participated in relevant lab sessions. So they gained that knowledge of uh, cranial nerve parasympathetics that way. The second year students had already taken the MHA gross anatomy course last year in the spring. So they were given a, the recorded version of the same lecture from this spring in order to freshen up their cranial autonomics uh, material. And then both first year and second year students completed online completely anonymized uh, pre-reviewed content assessments and confidence questionnaires. 
And when I say pre-review, I mean that students uh, interacted, this is before the students interacted with the models or interacting with the traditional lecture resources. So once they filled out these online assessments, uh, the first year students were invited to attend an optional in-person lab review session, again, based on their uh, gross anatomy lab groups. And they used uh, their respective resources, either the 3D model or the traditional lecture materials to complete a parasympathetic worksheet. And the second years were given the uh, worksheet as well and were invited to participate in this uh, asynchronous, e asynchronously, excuse me, uh, and individually. So again, the number of students that participated in this uh, worksheet or in this review session, first years, the experimental group was 10, the control group was 10 total, but again, only seven people from this group filled out the appropriate online assessments. And then we had the experimental group from the second year students with three. It was difficult to control the experimental versus control group with the second year students since things were distance and online due to COVID. So all second year students were just a part of the experimental group and had access to the models. And then after they were done filling out this worksheet and interacting with the models or in their respective you know, lecture and lab resources, students were then invited to fill out, again, completely anonymized online post-review content assessments and confidence questionnaires. And this is just uh, showing what these content assessments, the review worksheet itself and confidence questionnaire look like, just showing what the students were, were working with. So they were dealing with some Likert scales with the confidence questionnaire, uh, complete nervous and osteological pathways for the review worksheet and just some general content questions. So I wanna talk about some of the feedback I got on my uh, models first for my results. Students said that the most helpful aspects of the model included that it was easy, easy to visualize everything. They really liked the ability to move the skull around and see all the structures and it gave dimension to a previous 2D concept. So I really appreciate that last comment. But some improvements for the model that could be made were also added, adding sympathetics could be really beneficial to see those juxtaposition between the, the parasympathetics and sympathetics of the head and neck. If the different nerve paths were different colors and if we could put all the parasympathetics maybe into one complete whole model. This figure here shows the number of correct answers on the content assessment specifically comparing pre-review first and second years to post-review first and second year students. And this uh, analysis was um, gave, gave a p-value that was insignificant. So there wasn't a significant difference between the content assessment uh, correct answers, uh, pre-review versus post-review. And then dividing this up into the experimental versus control groups during pre-review versus post-review number of correct answers on the content assessments. Uh, again, even the differences between the experimental group and the control group were not significant either. For the um, confidence questionnaire, however, the students who strongly agreed that they agreed with the statements, I feel confident in my ability to, you know, ID cranial nerves on 2D diagrams, uh, ID cranial nerve parasympathetics on cadaveric specimens and mentally visualized cranial nerves. There is a huge difference from before the review to after the review where students felt that they strongly agreed with these statements. And the difference between pre-review and post-review was significant. So there was a significant difference in how students agreed with these statements before and after interacting with the models. So some, some conclusions we can draw from this study then are that the hypothesis that we had postulated at the beginning is accepted. There was a difference in the confidence of students after interacting with the model, but there were no significant differences in the pre versus post assessment scores or the experimental versus the control group assessment scores. So ultimately our results do align with that of the literature. And when we take student feedback and combine the empirical evidence that we collected, we can ultimately answer the question of does this work? Does having a 3D model of this complex anatomy to study head and neck anatomy work? And our answer is yes for this study. But some future directions that could be taken are incorporating student feedback into improving these models like overlaying sympathetics, combining all the parasympathetics into one model, et cetera, using both 3D printed and 3D digital models uh, after evaluating students on uh, which uh, traditional lecture material they found the most helpful. They said physical models are the most helpful for them. So incorporating that would give some uh, interesting results. Using a larger sample size, you can see the second year students, only three students participated. 
and doing in-person data collection in a post-COVID era. Since it was hard to regulate doing online versus in-person data collection, just having it all in-person would be uh, ideal. And then maybe using different schools on campus to sample, like from their dental students or medical students, et cetera. And with that, I invite any questions uh, for my capstone. Great, Lauren. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions for Lauren? I have a question. Yes. Jake. So first of all, fantastic work. I think the visualizations were stunning. Um, one of the things that I, what I wanted to ask is a bit of a self-reflection on uh, why you think only three of the second years uh, agreed to participate in the study versus the um, larger amount of first years and perhaps what could be done to incentivize greater participation to create that more robust sample size you were looking for. Yeah, so Jake was asking, how could I increase my second year student cohort, like sample size? I think I think the reason why a majority of them didn't participate, everybody had their capstone projects going on. So I completely understand that second semester of second year is a really busy time for everybody. But then I also couldn't offer any incentives to the second years like I could with the first years who were enrolled in the gross anatomy course. They were incentivized with um, some extra credit towards their unit two exam, whereas the second years were more just incentivized out of the, I don't know, if they had time or if they were available to. So hopefully in, in the future, I could uh, actually provide them with, you know, some, some other incentive. Again, probably doing in-person data collection to provide them with that kind of incentive. Cool, anything else? All right. If not, thank you very much, Lauren.